homework time, yes. Here we go again. Let's do it. Uh, let's start by putting our names down at the top of the paper. I'll put my name, and you go ahead and put yours. And write today's date. You write the actual date. I'll just write today. So, hey, easy stuff here. We can handle this. Draw a tape diagram to represent two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. Okay. It's this simple. We are not going to make this difficult. We are going to keep it simple. Okay, so I need four parts here because I'm adding two-thirds four times. And we recall then when we have a rectangle, we cut it in half and then bisect each of the halves. And then we have four parts. Each of these is two-thirds. There we go. And we can even go a step beyond, and this is not fully required by Eureka, but think about it, two, four, six, eight thirds. See, we can actually get to a solution there. Same thing over here. I know, I know, like this is like pretty straightforward, huh? So here we go. Draw a rectangle. We're adding seven eighths three times, so we'll just draw two lines to make three partitions, each of which we just call seven-eighths. We are like gods, you and I. We just say it's seven-eighths, and it's seven-eighths. It's like that. Um, you don't have to make this any more difficult. This is doing it right. And then we are, again, going to go that step beyond. Boy, my brackets are not up to snuff today, but hey, we're going to let stand. Seven, 14, 21, and these are all eighths, so we have 21 eighths in all. Now, same Examples, ah, you see here, we're going to write multiplication expressions to say the same thing. So how many times do we have two-thirds? We have it four times. So our multiplication expression is simply that, four times two-thirds. And we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the solution, although, again, that's not strictly required here, but we know it, so might as well. And then same thing over here. How many times do we have seven-eighths? three times. So it's three times seven eighths. And we already know three times seven is 21. And yes, Ed, we're talking about eighths. Booyah, just like that. One and two done. <coughs> On to three. And here, number three, our instructions are to rewrite each repeated addition problem. So here they are, repeated addition. Whoa, look at that one. Crazy. As a multiplication problem and solve all right, so we'll actually find a solution here. Express the result as a mixed number. So the idea is we'll end up with an improper fraction, and we'll, then we'll convert that to a mixed number. The first one's been completed, and if you look at it, there's the repeated addition. You make it multiplication. You say, hey, we can also write the multiplication this way. You get your improper fraction, convert it to a mixed number. Done. So let's do B. How many times do we have 7 tenths here? We have it 3 times. So 3 times we have 7 tenths tenths. And we can rewrite it like this to make it clear what we're doing. Um, and you will see this written both ways. So you need to be familiar that this is the same thing as this. Um, so what is that now? You got it. 21 tenths. And now to convert it to a mixed number, one way is to remember that uh, fractions express division. So 21 divided by 10. Well, 10, 20. Okay, so there are two tens in 21, and that leaves one tenth. So two and one tenth. And we've already done a lot on that, so I'm not going to explain that any further. Go back if you need to. How many times do we have five twelfths here? One, two, three, four, five, six times. So we have six times five twelfths which, to make clear that we do things correctly, you know, hey, it's 6 times 5, and yes, Ed, we talking about 12s. So how many 12s do we have now? 6 times 5, you know that, is 30. And we're still talking about 12s. So how many 12s are there in 30? Well, 12, 24, 36, uh, that's too many. Okay, so 12, 24. So there are two 12s in 30. Okay, if you do 30 minus 24, how many 12s do you have left? 30 minus 24 is 6, and we're talking about 12s. And I bet a lot of you, when you see 6 12s, you say, oh, that's equal to 1 half. You got those equivalent fractions. Oh, my goodness gracious, what is wrong with these people? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Whew. At least they didn't make us write all that mess. All right, twelve times three eighths. And we can rewrite this, of course, as twelve times three. Ooh, make that look like a three. Over eight. Over easy. And 12 times 3, we actually just did before, right? 12, 24, 36. So it's 36 eighths. Now to convert that to a mixed number, let's skip count by eighths. 8, 16, 24, 32. Okay, so we can go up to 32. That's 4 eighths. So there are 4 eighths in 36. 36 minus 32 well, these four, and yes, Ed, we still talking about eighths, and you're probably so keen you noticed right off that that would be equal to four and one-half as well. On to the next one. All right, number four, we just have a bunch of practice to do of doing this multiplication. We get to solve using any method, but make sure we're not going to leave them as improper fractions. We'll express them either as whole numbers. So, for example, if you have like 18 thirds, that's six with no fraction, six, right? Or mixed numbers, say like six and one-sixth. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, only on this first one am I going to do this interim step just so you could see it. I don't personally feel that it's really necessary, but to write it out as, hey, this is 7 times 2, and yes, Ed, we talking about ninths. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really see that as a necessary step there. But So I'll just do it on this first one and uh, leave it, omit it on the rest. Okay, so that's 14 ninths. I'd express this as a whole or mixed number. Well, how many nines in 14? Well, there's just one, right? And 14 minus that nine leaves how many ninths? 14 minus nine is five, so there are five ninths remaining. And again, I'm not over explaining how to do that because that's from a previous lesson. And so, as promised in this one, instead of rewriting it in this format, we can just say, hey, it's 11 times two is 22, and yes, Ed, we're talking about thirds. So how many threes in 22? Well, you probably jump right out of your seat saying, oh, I know 7 times 3 is 21, right? So 7 times 3 is 21. How many thirds does that leave? Just one third. That's the 22nd third. So 7 and 1 third. We have a little more practice to do here on number 4. Let's move right on to that. And I like to think that they're uh, giving us the opportunity to see here that, look, even when the numbers are bigger, nothing changes. We're doing the same process here. So in this one, 40 times 2, ah, you know that, right? 80, right. And yes, Ed, we're talking about 6. So now this is the only part you might have to do a little extra thinking on is how many 6s are there in 80. Well, one way to do this, as I've often said, is to remember that fractions express division. So you could come over here and say, okay, well, how many sixes in eight? There's one. Remember long division? Gosh, it's been a while. And so you subtract that six, and that leaves two. And I'm just cruising through this, bring down the zero. How many sixes in 20? There are three, yes, because three times six is 18. And you subtract now that two you get as a remainder, because that's how we do long division in fourth grade. That's going to be the numerator of your fraction. That's what's left over. So basically what this is saying, and I'll write it out here so you could see, is, hey, 13 times 6 is 78. And 80 minus 78 is 2. So what that means is, well, how many 6s are there in 80? There are 13. And that would be 13 times 6 is 78, which leaves two more six. Okay, now I'm not going to do this out on every one. I'm just showing you this is the thought process behind this conversion. So you can see every little step of it. Um, this is an interesting one. So 24 times 5. Well, uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, let's just multiply 24 times 5. You could double up and say, oh, I know it's 48 and 48 and another 24. There are various ways to go about this, but we'll just write out the multiplication. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. Regroup that 2, place the 0. Whoop. 
5 times 2 is 10, plus 2, wow, remember that? It's been a while, is 12, so 120. And then do your mental check. Does that make sense? Yeah, because 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 25 would be 125. 5 less is 120. Okay, everything makes sense. All right, so we're talking about 120, and they are 6. And I'm sure you see a little mathematical pattern right there, don't you? And, and uh, I will, although I was suggesting I might not, I will write out the division so you can see what's happening here. How many 6s in 12? Well, there are 2, because 2 times 6 is 12. You know, subtract, you get 0, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and so 0. Ah, so 6 times 20 is 120. So 126. How many 6s are there in 120? There are 20 because 20 times 6 is 120. So this is one where the uh, final answer is a whole number. Over here, same thing. 23 times 3. You may not need to in this case because there's no regrouping, but I'll just write out the multiplication so you can see it. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 69 fifths. And because it's fifths and skip counting by fives is easy, we can do this. We could actually start from 50, because we know that 10 times 5 is 50. But I'll start all the way from, from 0. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. Okay, so again, it is 13. And that would bring us to 65. So how many fifths are left out of the 69? 69 minus 65? Yes, is four fifths that are left over. And a simple check is to say, hey, five times 13 is 65, plus four is 69. And yes, Ed, we still talking about fifths. All right, and then lastly here on F, I bet you can double this number in your head because there's no regrouping. 34 times two, well, four doubled it is eight. Three doubled is six, six, eight, 68. And we're talking about eighths. And you probably know your eights well enough to know that eight times eight is 64. There we go. So eight times eight is 64. 68 minus 64 leaves how many eighths? Yes, four eighths. And I believe you're getting astute enough that you see four eighths and say, hey, that's an equivalent to one half. So we just have five, six, seven left to do, which we'll do all at once. Roll them. And fear not, my faithful friends. Yes, we have three word problems to do here, but you will find these exceptionally easy. And it does not specify to do the read, draw, write. Um, so we will definitely read and write, um, but I don't really see much reason to draw any kind of tape diagram here because we know what we're dealing with. So Colton, great guy he is, is playing with interlocking blocks. We can't use the word Lego that are each three quarters of an inch tall. He makes a tower 17 blocks tall. How tall is this tower in inches? Well, I mean, if you, here, we can make a little drawing if you want. So here's the tower, right? And I'm not gonna draw every little bit of it, but we know, hey, each, it's 17 blocks, right? And each block is three fourths of an inch tall. So he is three fourths of an inch 17 times. Okay, so right there we can see, there's our drawing, there's the tower, that's it. Kind of looks like a, never mind. All right, so uh, 17 times 3, that's probably not one you know off the top of your head, so let's do it over here, 17 times 3. Well, 3 times 7 is 21, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, 51, that makes sense. So we have 51 fourths. All right, great. Well, that's lovely, but we know that's not very useful to say it's 51 fourths inches. Um, so what we need to do is divide uh, 51 by 4. Well, we know that we can jump right to 10, right? And then continue on with 11 because 10 times 4 is 40. So from 11, 44, let me do it again, 44, 48, and next would be 52. Okay. So there are 12 fours and 51, because 12 times four is 48. We see that? 
subtract 51 minus 48 to figure out how many fourths we have left. Yes, there are three fourths left. Um, and if that little doing it in our head process confused you, you could write, write out the division for uh, 51 divided by 4. And remember, your remainder will be the numerator of your fraction here. So uh, we just need a little statement. His tower is not so tall, 12 and 3 fourths inches tall. Nice job, Colin. There were 11 players on Mr. Mayorani's softball team. They each ate three-eighths of a pizza. How many pizzas did they eat? Okay, um, so we, we have 11 players each eating three-eighths. So we can see we could add three-eighths 11 times, but that would be confusing and wasteful. So we can use our happy friend multiplication here. And here the multiplication is pretty easy. 11 times 3? Yeah, 33. And you said we're talking about eighths. So we can divide here to turn this into a mixed number. 8, 16, 24. What comes next? 32. Okay, so there are 4 eighths and 33. Because 4 times 8 is 32, which leaves, yes, 1 eighth. And of course, ask yourself, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, we need a statement here. Right, right. They ate four and one eighth. Make that fraction bar a little better. Pizzas. A bricklayer places 12 bricks end to end along the entire outside length of a shed's wall. Each brick is three fourths of a foot long. How many feet long? is that wall of the shed. And I guess this is end to end means no space in between. So uh, it's pretty straightforward at this point, right? 12 bricks, 3 fourths of a foot long. So it is 12 times 3 fourths. We can see that. And we did 12 times 3 at least twice before, just in this homework. 12 times 3 is 36. And we're talking about fourths. And remember, these are feet we're talking about. These are not inches, feet. How many feet long? So uh, how many 4s and 36? Well, you knowing the multiplication fact so well is useful because you know that 4 times what is 36? Yes, 4 times 9. So 4 times 9 is 36, and we're talking about feet. The wall is 9 feet long. I'm going to put an exclamation point because I'm so excited because we've done it. We completed yet another homework time. Rock on, my brothers, my sisters. I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time.